All right, I guess we're just gonna... Okay, so it's gonna be like pieces of paper on top of cabinets. Cartwright. The name Cartwright does ring a bell. Um... No, that's Sullivan. Cartwright, 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 Cartwright. I have to go look at the board again. I feel like, yeah, I feel like it was one of the people on the board. Can I, no. I don't even remember the name of the fucking security system anymore. You know what? Look it up. You, you were, you're, because otherwise we're going to be trundling around like, I have no idea where I'm going. Okay. Unless I find it in this next second, which... Okay, head back down to the basement where Clive kept all his recorders. Instead of going through the twisted maze of file cabinets, continue oh. forward into the left into a small room that's tucked away. Whoa. Where he kept all his file cabinets. That's the maze. So you've entered the maze. You've done the thing the guide says to not do. Okay, but then where were all his file cabinets? The... Don't, go stand by that blue door. Don't go through it. Uh huh. Turn around and look into the room. Uh -huh. So go like around the the shelf to the left there. Uh huh. Here. Like what's around here? Right here. Aha! Order delivery oh. form. Starling must have left this by accident. The, the mayor. Not even installed at Woodside. The mayor, Mayor Cartwright. <gasps> yes. Honestly, I'm going to leave this job and go work for Potty. Yeah, seriously. He's a fun guy. He's a fun guy. Oh, yeah, let me take actually a look at this now. That I can actually read it. Let me get Maybe some better see light. It. Okay. Yeah. Starling Security. Uh, delivery address. Uh, Literally yesterday. Or the day before, I guess. And the day before was the second. Yeah, delivery installation. Uh... It's really hard to see this. Yeah, it is. Let me go upstairs where there's better light. Okay. Here we go. I can probably read it here. There we go. Oh, there we go. Much better. Uh, delivery address. Uh, Gabriel's Hospital. Christine's Gas and Repair. Roller Ricky's Roller Rink. Yeah, we called it. Yup. Woodside Apartment. Okay. Unable to Un install. Yeah. Required new parts. New installation date, 17th of September. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. she can't be getting in because... Yeah. Yeah, this isn't going to help her get in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'll help her get into Roller Ricky's, though. Yeah, interesting. Interesting, Dawn! Or should we say Maisie Mayor Cartwright? Maisie Cartwright? What the fuck is Welcome she Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? Nothing by way of key codes. I see. What? There's two pieces of paper. Oh, there were two? Yeah. I'll look again. I'll go back and look again. Don't be too long. I'll take my goddamn time. Mm-hmm. We know how video games work. The plot's not going to move forward until we find the key item. And also, we can't find the code that she needs. I mean, we know that we don't want to help her. She's trying to get into Roller Ricky's. We gotta, yeah. we gotta save that dog and also Ricky, I guess. I mean, who's gonna? Well, I mean, I guess there's a lot of people to take care of the dogs, but that Ricky is special to that dog. We want the dog to have Ricky. Okay, so there was another paper over here. Yeah, in the same spot, I think. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Aunt, my good buddy with the tunnel vision. User manual. Hey, you know what? I was so excited about the mayor. Should come in handy. Love you, bud. I know, I know. <laughs> Listen, playing video games isn't as easy as I make it look. No, oh, that's true. That is very true. <laughs> Don's out here like, what did he fucking die? Where is he? <laughs> We so, just got lost in the murder maze. I'm sorry, I just got lost in Clive's murder maze. Dawn, if that is your real name, which it isn't. 
She was cagey when she gave us that name. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see what this says here. Our state-of-the-art security system uses a six-digit code system. Simply enter the code into the keypad and feel total peace of mind. The Starlink Security Alarm System 4000 comes with a range of features. The default codes for these features are listed below. Note, please change these codes immediately to prevent unwanted that uh, uh, unwanted entry. Mm -hmm. Maintenance call code, alarm test. Warning, this will set off all security measures. <gasps> we could tell her the wrong thing. We could tell her the wrong thing. That's probably not what we need to do, though. But, I'm just going to read the rest of this to make sure um, we're but, not killing the dog accidentally. But I, I know we want to screw her over, but not if it means hurting the dog. I know, I know, but I want to set off the alarm. Oh, okay. We do need to give her the alarm test activation code. <laughs> oh, bitch. Guess what's gonna happen. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starlink 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. It's a bunch Good. of codes. And did you find anything else? I saw a list of everyone else who bought the Starlink 4000. Know who was on there? Oh my god. Roller Ricky! I... Do you think we should give him a call? Yes! Is that crazy? I don't know what you'd say, but... Yeah, no, we absolutely need to. That yeah. That would be a good idea. Okay, one moment. I got the number here. Patching you through. Oh, no. Shit. He probably can't hear it over the music. Forrest, I don't know about this. This is super weird. Just put me through to Don. I'll take care of this one way or another. Okay. If you say so. Okay, so we have if when we give ready, her the code, it chases the chases off. her off, I'm assuming. Line one. And it also Whenever saves Ricky. Ready. Yeah, that's okay, that's what I thought. Hell yes. Don, are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, the scream. Oh, thank God you're back. Alarm test activation code. Yeah. The code is 191519. Thank you, Forrest. You're welcome, You're Don. You're welcome, Don. Yeet. 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 Uh-oh. Is she? She cranky. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, stay out! Nobody disrespect the sanctity of the ring! Yes! Don't ever come back here again! Oh, I'm calling the cops! Yeah! Oh, thank God. Hello? Is someone there? Ricky, get back inside and turn on the radio. Whoever that was, she was trying to break into the ring. She? Forrest, man, you got no idea. That was him. That was the whistling man. The alarm gave me just enough time to get my rifle. To... I don't like hurting folks, but I can't let anything happen to Max. Yeah. Oh, my God, neither can we. I... Yeah, we know. Listen, man, I'm heading back inside. Gonna barricade that window. My man, thank you. You and Peggy can skate for free whenever you want, forever. Aww. Hell yes. I... Thanks, Ricky. Can't wait. Got it. Talk to you soon. I'm gonna skate forever. From Gallows Creek, hear some music while we process what just happened. Uh, you know what? We're gonna play the word. By smooth. By smooth. So the whistling man is a woman. Uh. uh no. We had our suspicions. Yeah. I Dawn was suspicious. Yeah, sure, Forrest. You just never mentioned it. Hey! She called don't up. Don't question you how my mind multiple works. Multiple times. I knew she wasn't right. Yep. I knew she wasn't right. Is that right, Sherlock? 
Yes. Why do you think she requested that song? Uh, to get me outside. Mm-hmm. To get me outside? Maybe, but how? She didn't know the song was outside to start with. That's right. She never actually attacked me out there. But we, so? I did see what her. Now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. Okay, you're live in three, two... Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. We now believe the killer is actually a woman, one who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you. Uh, we're neighbors. Yeah, look out for each other and stay we're safe. We're neighbors. Look out for each other and stay safe. The killer was calling themselves Dawn. This could be a fake name. Yep. This Very much so. This could be a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. You folks have my new number, right? It's 911. Hopefully Lol. our next caller can help shed some light on our killer. Uh, and we've got a call. We've got a call come in. Son of a bitch. Hey folks, time to take a call. This is Forrest Nash, and you're listening. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's he's bleeding everywhere. Oh, fuck. I don't know what to do. Please help me. Uh, breathe. Or is he still breathing? Yeah, is he still breathing? Is he still breathing? Yeah, but, but he's bleeding out fast. I really need help. Please. Take a breath. Who's your friend? Like that, and I, I just panicked and ran and hid in a bush. Oh no, Forrest. Then what happened? He went up the road and talked to someone. I couldn't really hear or see anything. It sounded like he might have known the person. And they just stabbed Who him. is your friend? Uh, was it a woman? Probably not. Yeah. Probably won't be able to tell. Probably not. But was it a town? Or was it a woman? Was it a town? It was the Maybe entire the town. town. Lost its only ambulance. Uh, was it a woman? I'm gonna say. What do you think? Yeah, that's fine. I Crazy. don't think it makes much difference. Was he talking to a woman? I don't know. They yeah. Had to ask and we're all yeah, I knew it. Mm -hmm. No, please, we need help here. I'll get you help, but I need to know where did the masked person go? They left. They left him to bleed out. I waited until they were gone, then dragged him into the garage and called. Wait, why didn't she make sure he was dead? I don't know. I think I heard them say something like, it's not so funny now, is it? Before they left, but... <laughs> Will <Please>. pizza help? <laughs> Yeah, what is your friend's name? Where is he hurt? It doesn't really matter. He was stabbed. Yeah, he what, was stabbed. What is your friend's name? Yep. What's your friend's name, Casey? Jason. Jason Parker. Can you yeah. tell us where Jason was stabbed? In the body. In the stomach. And then stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground. Ooh. Oh, the knife is still there in his leg. Oh. Right Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. Boom. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. <clears throat> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh, God, I'm sorry. But the ambulance is... Well, you know. I know, but please. <laughs> Forrest, I... Listen, you're going to have to get him here. What? We have to see him and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. <laughs> All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first and then finding someone to stabilize him. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. Me neither. Uh, 
Damn it. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can, and then leave the rest to you. You think you can handle that? Uh, yeah, we don't have much choice, but we can handle it. It's yeah, fine. I worked at a I'm vet sure clinic for 10 it. years. Okay. I'm sure it's <laughs> the same <laughs> thing. Yeah. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Lay him down. Apply continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. Apply pressure. Clean cloths when slowed. Got it. I think. You so got it, stabbed, Peggy. Right? If the object he was stabbed with is still in him, do not remove don't it. Yeah. take it out. It's stopping the worst of the bleeding right now. Yep. If anything, you should secure it so it stays where it is. Oh, that sucks. I wouldn't have thought of that. I would have. That makes sense, though. God, that was a lot of info. But I think we can handle this. Yeah, we can Peggy, stabilize that was it. really so fucking basic. Uh, keep going. Keep going. I'm still. I got this. What else do we need to know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. If he does, act fast. Slap him now. If you apply the cloth <laughs> and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Right. Just Add apply more. another on top of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Try to keep him warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Uh, don't replace bandages. Elevate his, his legs. legs. Keep him warm and calm. This is a lot. I'm really sorry. It's really not. That's as much as I can give you right now. Try to stop the bleeding. Find someone to get him stabilized and get him here as quick as you can. God, poor Good Casey. Luck. Way to go on the All other right, line. Yeah. Casey's still on line one. Let's get some music. No. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Forrest, are you there? Uh, how is Jason? Yeah. I'm here. How is Jason doing? He's still bleeding. <laughs> he still has blood. I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. Okay, good. He's still bleeding. I don't know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. Scoop what all of the blood up and put it back in. It's gotta be hell. Should I pull it out? No, 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 no. Don't touch the knife. No, don't touch the knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you sure? I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop making suggestions. That's good, yes. Don't, don't worry, Casey. We're a team here. We're all going to get Jason through this. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? <laughs> I hate looking at that knife. Y yeah, yeah. It's bleeding. His stomach is worse, though. Uh, need, we to, need secure to secure the, the knife. knife. I think we need to secure the knife so it doesn't move around. Do you have anything you can tie around? Yeah, because otherwise it'll make the wound bigger. Yeah. There's some laundry piled up on top of the dryer. Not for long. On the hood of the car, and what else? I guess I've got my jacket. Oh, uh, the cleaning rags are going to be filthy. Yeah, I use the laundry. Use the laundry. It's probably clean. Yeah. Look in the laundry for something like a towel or a shirt. Hold that over the wound. Okay. That's what cold water and leeches for. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Jason. It's secure. I'm putting pressure on his stomach again. Damn, that was fast. I know. I'm starting to think we might make it. Forrest, can I have a word? Not right now, Peggy. Now? Seriously, girl? I'm going to say now. Yeah. Now isn't the best time, Peggy. Can it wait? Forrest, it's kind of important. All right. Give me a second. Casey, I'm going to have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on and let us know when the bleeding is under control. You're doing great. But what if something happens? We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything and we'll be there. I promise. Okay. I'll wait. Jason, please be okay. Okay, what do you What's want? What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? <sighs> You're right. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. Ooh. Exactly. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. She'll have to drive him. She can't drive. Oh, wait. He told us that. Could somebody nearby help? Yeah, I think it's got to be that. somebody nearby help them? Maybe drive them to the hospital? You know, that's exactly what I was wondering. Do you have anybody in mind? 
I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Her? Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a producer uh. getaway. You skipped uh -huh. it, didn't you? I, never mind. So, how does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah, why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. Thank you, get to the point, please. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably, but I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. Could you call them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. Ugh. I've only ever called Karen. Everybody's personnel info is probably in Reggie's office. Got it. I'll look through their files and Reggie's office. Give me the keys. It's a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. Right. But there are a couple of problems with that. Naturally. Could this not Naturally. have waited until we stabilized the yeah. information? So Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Great. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not 69, 69. Yeah. He's a serial note taker, though. Maybe something in his office will give it away. Okay, give me the keys. Right. There is something else. Uh, oh what? God, Peggy. Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? Peggy, what the hell are you talking about? I've heard, don't I'm copy that floppy. floppy disks. Floppy disks are like these futuristic things. Oh my God. Information on them. You put them in a computer and they do something. Peggy. Peggy. I know what a floppy disk is. Peggy, anyway, a man is bleeding out. Reggie decided that the future is floppy and started phasing out our physical records and replacing them with these floppy disks. That was stupid. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. That's good to know. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Why do you have do you every have key? I just have to look around. Oh my god. No, I don't. There isn't more for me to do. I can leave now. What? Good. I'll patch my oh. mic down to the office so you'll hear me over the intercom. Hey, Peggy, you could have just given me every key to start, right? You know that, right? Peggy? Seriously. Oh. I'm a master, a master of unlocking. Of unlocking. Excellent. All right. Let's go to Reggie's goddamn office. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, what if we could send the pizza guy? He has delivery. Oh my god, oh my god, Pawnee, why don't we just call up Pawnee, order a pie, and Pawnee will save this guy. Yeah. With delicious pizza. Reggie wants to believe, did you see that? Oh my god. Oh my god, Reggie. Oh my god. From below it came Scorpion! Laser Racer! I miss the 80s. I don't. What is this? Uh, boring. Wow. Oh my god, he does. He let. He's he's all into UFOs. Looks like I need a four-digit code. Uh, what does it say? Acts forever. Need to write pitch document. Good title. Bring back original protag and villain. He's got a best boss mug. All right, four digits. Oh, are we? Hey, Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? I can't figure out how to get into this stupid safe. You know oh, what? we haven't poked around enough. Yeah. Reggie writes almost everything down somewhere. I recommend you start reading. I'll have a look around. You're probably right. I'll let you know when I find something, or don't. Uh. Chalupa, Chalupa Cabras. Like it's just a receipt. Yeah. A taste of Mexico. Can we look at his computer? Please insert. Oh, please insert. Okay. The floppiness is probably in the safe. Oh, wait. What is this? Ask Jeannie where those tapes are. It's been weeks now. Overdue. Oh, we got this. Clive, if you're reading this, stop stealing my post it notes. Wow. Ooh, what is this? Oh, VHS. Uh, alien sightings number 75 UFO over park <laughs> clear sky oh these are his his personal recordings of UFOs because of course Ooh. 
a floppy. Maybe this floppy has all the passwords written down. Deep uh, cuts. Top secret. Pizza delivery killer who kills with a pizza cutter. Free slice on me. Terrifyingly, there is never any pizza. What happened to the original delivery guy? Maybe write him in as final girl's boyfriend. Protagonist is college student Megan, surname to follow. She's smart, beautiful, resourceful, and lactose intolerant. Amplifies the divide between her and the pizza killer. Oh my god. Takes place on November 7th. Very important date for the town. Okay, Wait. there's our four-digit code. Oh, uh, 1107? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would keep reading this shit, though. Yeah, do it, do it. Great, great Goose Gathering, event where a large number of geese appear suddenly and save the town from starvation. Try to link this into the greater story. Need to kill off Megan's support network throughout the movie, like Acts 3, but even scarier. Maybe partner with Ponty's Pizza for the launch? One yeah! One ten orders ju just receive a pizza cutter and tickets to the movie. One out of ten orders just receive a pizza cutter. That's a terror. Wow. That's bad. Okay, eleven oh seven. Don't uh, don't quit your day job. Or maybe you should because this sucks. Oh, what does this say? Hint: very important date. Yep, you're right. Okay. Yep, I'm right. You're smart. Sometimes. Sometimes one, I notice things. One zero seven. Nice. Nice. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Look at all these floppies. But I have to copy all of them. Oh, God. Oh, this is so much pressure. Personnel file. John Hodges. Hedges. Okay. Let's, um... I'm gonna put all these out over here. No. <laughs> I only have two hands and these floppies are so heavy. They're so big, Anthony. They're five and a half inches. Actually, they don't look big enough. Or skinny enough. Okie Okay. Uh, there we go. And yeet. yeet. <laughs> <laughs> Take that screenplay. Are you putting one fuck? What the fuck was that? Somebody knocking on the door. Hello? Hello? Can't see out the window. Nope. Why do all the doors swing both ways? Pride month, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I walked into that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Barbara Albright, receptionist. October 7th, 1957, 14 Craven Street. Barbara is really getting on well with all the staff here. Everybody gave her great feedback in our last review. I get the feeling there's something going on with her and Brad. Call it a hunch. Ha. Barbara got another cat recently. She must have had. She must have at least five now. Daisy, Murphy, Penelope, Freddie, and Lord Winston. I'll need to monitor productivity going forward. The cat photos are a big distraction for the rest of the team. Barbara laughed when I told her about the concept for my new horror script. I don't care what she thinks. A story about an alien egg at the center of the Earth set to hatch on February 30th is a great idea. Why else would we avoid having a February 30th? Yup. If got I, it. If I wrote that as a D&D &D plot, you guys would revolt. I mean, you did give us a sewer egg. I did give you a sewer egg. I love your filing system. Throwing it? <laughs> <laughs> Just yeeting it across the room. It's great. Bradley hey, Park. Brad! Uh, food critic. Uh, 31 Axe Down Lane. Uh, when I hired Brad as our station's food critic, people said I was crazy. We only have three takeout places at a diner. What's the point? To them, I say, you can't be afraid to explore the darkest reaches of the unknown. Or Henderson. Bradley and Barbara seem to be spending an awful lot of time together. I didn't realize she was so interested in Brad's work. Maybe I should join one of their after-work meetings sometime. I've always wanted to learn more about food. They're fucking! Brad and Barbara ended up missing most of our first aid training session. Brad made a joke about practicing mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, and Barbara got really upset and stormed off. The joke wasn't that bad. God damn it. Oh, he's an idiot. I get it. All right, wow. well... well um, They're not fucking, because he's too dumb. The office himbo, everyone. Can we um, look at Barbara's file again real quick? I want to see what... I'm just writing down the names of the streets they live on, just in case oh, we have yeah. to remember those. But they missed the, the first aid thing, so it won't work with them. 
Brad and Barbara yeah. did? Yeah. No, Peggy and No, Barbara's Karen receptionist. Did. But th- it just said on the thing, uh, with just now, hold on. Oh. I was so distracted about learning about her cats and her cats' names. I'm not surprised that that was what you picked up on. <laughs> yeah, Brad and Barbara ended up missing most of our first aid training session down at the bottom. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so that the it won't be it won't be one of them. It, neither of them. Okay. Ye- well, I'm not writing those down. Get out of here, Brad and Barbara. Get a load of this, Peggy. Apparently, I'm a lone wolf type. Oh, I'm looking at my own file. Oh shit. We don't have time for this. Yeah, we do. We yeah, Peggy. And I'm know. dying to know what he thinks about me. I'm sorry. I need to focus on possible candidates. I can read the rest of this later. No, we're reading it right, right now. Right now. Um, address the come on in on Romero Street. I did just move 1940. in. 1940? We're fucking elderly. Holy shit, we are 47 years old. I mean, that's not far off from us, actually. We're, this is not elderly. Notes. I... Well, I'm, I'm just thinking about somebody <laughs> born in 1940 and it's 2024 right now. Okay, but this is 1987 here. Right. Okay. I can't believe we actually got the Forrest Nash here in Gallows Creek. His motivation may be low, his demands are a bit beyond our means, and he's currently blacklisted from any reputable station, but honestly, we don't have a reputation to lose. Forrest isn't really into integrating with the team. Seems to have this lone wolf thing going on. Heard him call Jeannie, Janie, Janine, and Brenda in his first week. Hopefully this changes when he gets settled. I've paired Forrest with Peggy for his show. They seem to have developed a relationship of sorts pretty quickly, which is good because we sure don't have the show budget to pair him with Karen. What does that mean? I don't know. Karen seems like a problem. I guess so. Hell yeah, Ponty. Get on it. Okay. Oh, oh hey, Karen. It's Karen. Karen L- Lawson, senior producer. 22 Nancy Drive. I think that's oh, close. I, I think they're at 24 Nancy Drive. Oh, but Karen missed part most of the, the, the session, oh, according to her. Yeah. But, uh, Karen has really stepped up her duties in recent months. She has fully taken on Hamish's show alongside the Timberlane twins ever since Wes left us. Hopefully she doesn't get any ideas about being paid double. <laughs> in the 80s, a woman? <laughs> a woman? A <laughs> woman? <sighs> Karen has started mentoring Peggy. I think this will be really good for Peggy. They are even doing team building training getaways to improve efficiency. Update. I'm starting to suspect that these producer training getaways are being strategically timed. They now both miss Secret Santa, first aid training, and the Teddy Gallows Junior Station visit. I mean, thank God they missed the Teddy Gallows Junior Station visit. Yeah, fuck that guy. That man is fucking insufferable. Hey, Peggy. I think Reggie's on to you and Karen. Maybe don't bring those little drink umbrellas into work for a while. What? Why are you reading my file? You need to find someone who can help Casey. We already know I can. Don't waste time. I'm not. Right. I'm sorry. I need to focus on possible candidates. I'm doing whatever I can. Both. We're in a hurry. I don't know, maybe there's something interesting here. Apartment 17A, well, She's 19 Wayland years Road. younger than Forrest. That's I've worrying. Ne- I've never seen somebody gel with everybody as quickly as Peggy has. Her, Karen, and Barbara have really become a little family already. Maybe we need to run this station on girl power. Hopefully it's cheaper than electric. Yuck, 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 yuck. Sometimes I wonder if Peggy secretly wants her own show. She hasn't been shy about getting involved in the calls on the screen. Sometimes it feels as though Forrest could just leave for a coffee mid-call and nobody would know. It's true. It's true. Peggy and Karen have missed another work event, this time first aid training because of their training sessions. Their collection of cocktail parasols grows after after each session. Why are they training sessions at a bar? Where would you train? At a bar. Oh, I guess they are labeled, huh? Well, it must be that this last one. Is of course, be the it's one. the last one. Yeah, tw- yeah. Peggy's twenty-seven. We're forty-seven. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um. Hey, fourteen Nancy 14 Drive. Fourteen Nancy Drive. Okay, looks like it might be John Hedges. Notes: John refused to engage with the first aid trainer during the course. I know he was a war medic, but it was station policy. To- oh God, to send everybody. Well, okay, obviously we want to send the war medic. Yeah, we're gonna send the goddamn war medic. 
<laughs> John apparently. 1931. Oh, oof. Oof. World John... War II vet. Yep. John apparently has a bunch of medical equipment in his home that he procured from the military at the end of his service. Is that legal? Do I need to report him? No. Why is this on? Fine. Why is this on his file, Reggie? I think it's probably the game being like, this yeah. guy, you want this guy, this is the one. Spoke to John again about eating the free samples that Brad gets sent for his reviews. He said he'd stop, but he said that the last three times too. Is it un-American to reprimand a war vet? All right, well, we know who. Yeah, it's this guy. Let's huh? take his file up. Yeah, I was going to throw it, but you're right. That's fine. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye, floppy disks. <laughs> That may or may not contain the souls of my friends because it's 1987 and I don't know how computers work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I slide, I slide, I slide the floppy under the door. I got it. <laughs> and she's like, I don't have a computer in here. How do I get the information? Oh, maybe I was supposed to talk on the intercom. God damn it. <sighs> Okay, be right back, Peggy. All right. you can see I'm here and I want to talk to you, but I'm going to go back downstairs. She, it looked like she was rubbing her temples. Yeah, I have a headache too. Yep. Peggy, did he die? Is he dead? You would have told me if he's dead, right? I wouldn't. Yeah, she probably would have yelled at us over the intercom. Jason Parker was the guy's name, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, here we go. Hey, Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? I think I know who to call. I think yeah. I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. All right, good work. Who should I... Hello? Is anybody there? Please pick up. Casey, I'm here. What's wrong? Jason started going pale. I tried to get him to rest, but he just threw up everywhere. What's happening? What do I do? Did he have booze or... He's going, he's into, going shock. into shock. Yeah. God, it sounds like he's going into shock. Casey, just stay calm. It's going to be okay. But the bleeding seems to slow down. Did he's I running out of blood. blood. Yeah. Jason, I'm sorry. Casey, calm down. You've done everything right. I... I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Uh... Elevate Jason's legs. Legs. Elevate his wounds. <laughs> to elevate Jason's legs. We need to get the blood flowing to his vital organs. Got it. <laughs> elevate his me. wounds. I'm just gonna move you. This might hurt. Okay. I propped his legs up on some boxes. I'm looking at my notes. We need to get Jason as warm and comfortable as possible. Do you have anything you could use nearby, Casey? Why didn't you do that, like, 20 minutes ago? Sorry, sorry. Jason's bleeding through his bandages. New bandages. Should I get him new ones? Or... or oh, God. Apply an additional bandage. Mm-hmm. Don't remove the bandage. Apply another one on top of it. Do you still have something you can use? I've used the rest of the laundry to keep him warm, so... I'll use my jacket. There you go. I always get a new one. Yeah. This is all very basic stuff. It really is. Sorry, sorry. I'm done. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, Jason. Just relax now. I don't know what to do without my soundboard. I want to applaud you. He's not doing well. Is he? Is he gonna... He was stabbed. He's gonna be fine. Jason is going to be fine. Just make sure he knows he's gonna be okay. Okay? I'm working on it. Please, oh my god. I have this right, floppy. Do you know what a floppy disk is? Jason doesn't sound like he's doing too well. Yeah, Peggy, no shit. Call earlier? Who was it? Oh my god. I, I did go through a bunch of... It's John Hedges. Is it? Is the no. What's the name on our, on our disk? John Hedges. Okay. Yes. We need to call John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. He didn't really participate in the first aid training. But he's a former war medic. Woo! He's probably the most trained person we have. Really? I never really spoke to him before. A war medic, huh? 
Yeah, and according to Reggie's notes, John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. All right. What's his number? Oh, fuck. Uh, five, <laughs> two, zero, seven, three, five. Calling now. Let's hope he picks... Uh, who the hell is this calling me? What time is it? John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We the screen. And we need your help. Forrest? If this is a work emergency, then it can wait until the goddamn morning. Just leave me a note like everybody else. This is a medical emergency. Somebody has... One of these. Yeah, I, I think either one is fine. Uh, somebody has been stabbed. Maybe somebody has been stabbed yeah. because a that has been stabbed gives them more information. Or, never mind. He's lost a lot of blood and he's passed out. We need you to help him. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, we're not kidding. A man is going to die if we don't help him right now. Seriously? Uh, yes, seriously. I know we just woke I you up. I have called on for over 10 years. It's just like riding a bike. He's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. You say he was stabbed? Do you know the extent of his injuries? From what we were told, he has two major stab wounds. One to the stomach and one to the leg. The knife is still in his leg, and the stomach wound is open. Understood. Let me grab a few supplies, and I'll head right over. Damned if he dies on my block. Hell yeah! Yeah! Well, let him know you're on your way. Hello, Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? Bad. Jason seemed really weak, and then just started thrashing. Uh, how is he now? Yeah. What about now? Yeah. Is he still thrashing? He's passed out. Please tell me you found someone to help. Casey, help is on the way. My colleague will be there soon. That was quick, dude. I'm guessing that's Jason there. Casey, I'm gonna need your help. Forrest, Peggy, don't you two worry. We've got this from here. Okay. Forrest, we'll call you back later. I have to go now. Good luck, everyone. God, I hope he's gonna be all right. <sighs> and with that, the show moves on. We're sending our best wishes to Jason. I want to believe. I want to believe. Well, after all that excitement, I think we could use some music. Uh, gotta get... Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. I'm trying, but the game won't let me. <laughs> I love this game. This game is so I... great. I love this game, but that whole scenario was so fucking frustrating to yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. What? Why was it uniquely frustrating to you? Just all of the interruptions. It's like, can we please take care of the man first, and then talk to Peggy, and then go down and do the floppies? Like, yeah. just all of the interruptions were so unnecessary. Yeah. You'll like this next song. It's getting pretty late. This might be your last break for the night, so try to enjoy it. Give me a buzz when you want to go back on air. Well, I'm gonna... What? Yeet. There we go. Yeet. There we go. Free time. Time to call Potty's <laughs> Pizza. Maybe we can prank call Potty somehow. One free beer. One free beer. Yeet. Man, eight ninety nine for a pizza. Goddamn. I wish. Ugh. All right, let's 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 do this thing. Let's roll. You got it. We've got another call coming through too. Perfect. Welcome back to one eighty nine point sixteen. The screen. Is it dawn? I believe we have another caller on the line. How are you tonight, caller? Ares. Me, Roller Ricky. Oh, oh and Maxie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good to hear from you. Good to hear from you again. How are you both doing? Oh, we're good, man. Thanks to you. You're like our guardian angel. Aww. That would be a bad look for you, Forrest. A little white wing halo number. 
Maybe something for the K fan Halloween party. All right, everyone, let's calm down. <laughs> let's calm down. I'm not that great. <laughs> yes, I am. I help you and Maxi. Is there anything else we can help you with, Ricky? Actually, I think I have some info that might help you. What? Info from the attack? Yeah. Did you see or hear anything during the attack earlier? Not exactly. You see, man, uh, me and Jason know each other. Oh, what? You know each other? Yeah, we went to Gallows High and played on the football team together. He was a gnarly offensive linesman, and I was our star wide receiver. Runner Ricky, they called me. All right, and what does that have to do with tonight? Well, because George, the guy who drowned, he was on our team, too. Uh, keep talking. Okay. Keep talking. What happened? We had our first team party on the night he drowned. Oh, no. He seemed like such a good dude. Ricky, were you there when George drowned? No, man. Once the party turned, I'd be beat out of there. Man, I remember George and his girl there. There was a whole lot of love, man. I could see it, you know? Oh. What was her name? It was Maisie, not was, Dawn. Yeah, it was Maisie. But let's, you know, tell me about her. Ricky, yeah. Listen, this is very important. I need to know everything about her. I didn't really know her before or see her after that. I never even got her name, man. Ugh. I just remember he called her Bean. Then what did she look like? Please, tell us anything you remember. I just remember a pretty girl, man. I'm sorry. Ricky, you said the party didn't last long. What happened? We were just having a good time. And then the next thing I knew, everyone was running for their life. I looked up and saw a goddamn whistling man in the trees. And I never ran so fast in my life. I ran straight home. Didn't know about George until next morning at school. I'm mm. guessing it was whistling night, wasn't it? That the whistling man was just another Yeah, I was going to say it was a prank. I don't know how George died, but... Uh, I always felt like if anyone deserved to die that night, it should have been me. No, no survivor's guilt. That it wasn't your fault. Yep. Ricky. It wasn't your fault. Okay, I'm starting to get an idea not a here. Bad person. I'm gonna wait till they're done. I know that now, ma'am. Took a long time to learn, but yeah. Just thought I'd tell you all what I know. Thank you, Ricky. This helps. Thank you. You got it, ma'am. Anyway, I think it's time for me and Maxie to free up your phone lines. Thanks for listening, man. I'll let you to it. Oh! Yeah, Ricky. Ork. and Maxie. Mm -hmm. All right, folks. Looks like we got a new lead in the case. If anyone has any info about this mysterious bean, please call in. If she was George's girlfriend back then, she's probably in her mid to late thirties now. Huh. Oh, we have another call coming in. But hang on. What's up, Peggy? Peggy. Peggy. Pe Pe Peggy. Peggy. You're gonna want to take this call off the air. Who is it? Just do it. All um, right, folks, it's time for another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. We'll be right back after this. I swear to God, Pawnee, if it's you. Okay. Before I, before we Hope take you this enjoy call. This one as much as I do. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh, I hope this is good news. God, okay, hold on. Let them finish talking. What we got? Find out for yourself on line one. Okay, anyway.